Hey guys, and welcome back to the Crystalline Podcast. We have a better setup. I apologize for my last video. It was the worst, but this podcast is all about self-love, personal growth, and self-worth. I'm your host, Summer Clark. This episode is all about the F word error. <laughs> I'm not swearing because that is a bad thing to do. And <laughs> no thank you, demonetization. No thanks. Um, so you'll kind of get what I'm going on about, like, kind of like, have you ever been, like, limited by someone or something, some, just some person that does not align with your purpose and what you're doing, and how that can have, like, a toll, you know, on your well-being and what you want to do in your life, so that's what we're going to discuss in today's episode, um, just not letting people drag you down because that sucks. Um, so we're going to talk about a few things and, you know, my stories that kind of like relate and what I learned from them and how you can learn from them too. So stagnation is, it's like, you know, if you guys don't know what stagnation, I just think of like a pond that's just been rotting for like ages and that's like you you have to be like you have to flow like a river rather than being like a, a pond and you can't like be around people that are like that <laughs> that keep you as a dirty little pond or like a little puddle you need to be like a flowing river and you need to go with you know what <laughs> I don't know why I'm the way I am you need to go with what you know is right for you and nobody can tell you what's right for you you need to figure that one out yourself and that's easier said than done isn't it so limits imposed by others can prevent you from exploring new opportunities trying new things and pursuing your interests this can lead to stagnation uh where you feel stuck in your current situation without any room for growth again you need to be that river don't be it's like be water my friend <laughs> so you need to be you know flowing like I was as a child like I was kept in like a weird state and it really annoys me. And it's kind of embarrassing, like, looking back. But it's made me, it's, like, brought me to where I am today. And, like, I guess things would have been a lot different. Like, I... <laughs> and, but I am making it up to myself. This is the greatest thing about being an adult and, you know, paying your own taxes and whatever. You can do things for yourself now. And I'm so sorry if you guys can hear, like, loads of noise in the background. There is, the, it's like 40 mile an hour, some winds out there, and it's just crazy. So, yeah, okay, so, yeah, so I was kept in, like, this weird childlike state. And it was such a wake-up call for me when I found out, I was on, like, my course for my degree, in which I chose to do myself. I chose to, like, um, run away, essentially, um, away from that kind of hold on me. Um, and I studied marine science, so, well, marine biology, so on, um, and I, that's not what I wanted to do, I mean, yeah, I loved dolphins when I was a kid, but in reality, that is not what I wanted to do, and this is really, and a memory came back recently, and I'll discuss it later, but I was kept in this childlike state of, like, oh, well, you're just a little girl, you can't do anything, like, you can't do anything, so I never really had any ambition really but I was going with the flow but there were people that were interfering my parents um were <laughs> interfering in what I wanted to do um and you can't let anyone do that you really got to hold your ground um nobody can tell you what's right or wrong for you it's only you only your gut your instinct can know this um so yeah I was the the moment that changed for me when I was on my course and I, one of the TAs, the teacher assistants, um, I guess there's like two, there's like a teacher assistant, yeah, I don't know what his job title was, we're going to say a TA, um, and he, I think it was a lab tech, yeah, a lab tech, and he pointed out that one of the TAs was like the same age as me, I was like, what? It blew my mind, because I you know, that really, I don't know why that really struck me, because I was like, I can't believe it, that was a real, that was a real changing point for me at that moment, because I never realised that I could be more, <laughs> like, it, it kind of was, 
you know, because I was kept at this level of you can't do anything, you're a little girl. That was what I was kept at. And when I realized that I could be more, I was like, oh my gosh, um, she's like got a professional kind of job. <laughs> and here's me, like basically in school. <laughs> and it was a like a a changing point that I was like, okay, that's kind of driven me to do better because I just can't believe it. Um, like age-wise, the way I was acting. I was still acting like a little girl and there was this woman essentially acting her age the way I should have been acting and that was a real wake-up call for me and that had happened because I was kept in that little child like oh you're a little girl you can't do anything kind of state even though I kind of had like a silver spoon I got I was so spoiled and got everything I wanted um I just can't believe it I was like what? She's like the same age as me. It's so weird. And there she was. <laughs> it was so weird. Um, but I've, I've decided to make it up like for myself. Being in that childhood state, like I hadn't been, you know, to like, I would say on the ladder. I'm going to say on the ladder to like where other people are. Like, it's a lot more, some of my friends got professional jobs, and there's me, I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I really, like, I was like, oh my gosh. But comparison is the factor of joy. We are all our own, on our own little journeys, and, you know, we can't compare ourselves to others because that is, like, damaging for your mental health, because, you you know, you can't crumble and be a, if you, you know what I mean. So that's really not good but now I'm making it up because I'm gonna go get that psychology degree um which is a jump from marine science but I'm gonna tell you a story of why I want to go get my psychology degree because or my doctorate or something psychology that's the path that I want and it's kind of like a what I've always wanted to do and there was something else as well and it was taken away from me because of another thing we're gonna talk about control and how people <laughs> and how that limits you um, so along with that, maybe it was perhaps like a low self-esteem thing as well. Like I did grow up, unfortunately, with constant criticism and I did have like, you know, it was negativity. Um, but this can like, this can chip away at your self-confidence, self-worth. So I obviously didn't believe that I was... <laughs> of acting my age and doing things and so yeah so it can make you doubt your abilities and potential and this can hinder your willingness to take risks and challenge yourself so you really got to watch out for how people are treating you um, and I know like you can never tell until you get like a different perspective and it's finding someone my age certainly was a different perspective so you got to really look at what is what is wrong with you no what is that that is playing with your self-esteem and I know that's really hard it's like what how can I notice that it's like what is making you feel like you're incapable of doing anything and then you avoid it like hell you burn it you bury it in the ground the ashes you know in a, in a remote area <laughs> no um that's my Ron Swanson coming out, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so find what is hindering your, like, your progress. You know, you're willing to, like, explore things in the world. And I know sometimes that could be either a protective parent that aren't understanding you. But, again, it really is your instinct that is what's best for you, okay? So nobody can tell you what's right or wrong for you, okay? <laughs> So, as me on self doubt, this actually comes into play with like when others consistently undermine your goals and aspirations, you may start to doubt yourself and your capabilities. Oh my god! Again, nobody can tell you what's right or what's wrong for you, um, and this can lead to like hesitation in you know pursuing your dreams and like settling for less than what you are actually capable of achieving your potential is just oh, it's just there it's waiting for you and sometimes it can be limited by like the stories we tell ourselves and you know <laughs> the drama <laughs> the stories we tell ourselves and 
you know, what we can and can't do. The micro habits as well that we have all taken on can also affect this as well. Um, and it really isn't getting like all the gears going. So watch yourself for like little micro habits. It could be like scrolling. Like again, I am getting rid of my phone as much as I can. I put it in the stock, stock drawer. And that has really helped me do so much. Oh, wow. Um, but nobody, like, if someone undermines your goals and aspiration, never talk to them again. Again, also, it's like you shouldn't be telling your dreams until you've made them happen. Like, that's a really good rule. It's like, don't tell anyone until, you know, it's like actions, not words. It's like, don't tell someone, just show them. Like, because people will, like, no matter, everyone loves to put their own opinion. And I've learned that I don't go to people with negative opinions. So it's like, I've learned this as a, as a kid. I think I, like, developed, <laughs> talk about this, but I did learn this. I was like, right, I'm not talking to you because I know exactly what, I'm such a bad chess player, but I can predict what people, how, the way people are going to behave. And this is probably why I should have been a psychologist. <laughs> um, but... I was like, okay, I'm not going to talk to you about it. <laughs> I'm going to get you because you're like a really positive person. And we're going to talk about this and you're going to be like, oh my God, that's a brilliant one. It's like, so you need to look out for people that are positive and negative. Um, you need to be careful with like your dream and who you tell it to. Because I know sometimes people like, you know, are always willing, yeah, to just knock it down. But these people haven't, you know, they haven't, they haven't accomplished anything in their life normally. You'll find that, like, I have someone who's supposed to be a mentor for me at the minute, and they are not, like, I can just tell that they have not run a business. They, because someone who is trying to run a business will never knock down anyone else that's trying to run a business. And there was a story about, like, in a group of in a room full of people or something and there was a business owner and this little kid told this group you know their idea and everyone laughed at the business owner <laughs> so it's like nobody will take you down you know if you have an idea or a dream because they haven't lived up and that, yeah that I guess that goes for people that you know haven't took on their dreams they haven't done that and it's like a weird cycle of like negativity. But if you look for the right person for you, the right mentor, you know, or mentor, your Gandalf, um, you know, they will, they will do what's right for you. They will be what's right for you. And that is like a decision. Like I'm coming from a like a business point of view, but you have to look at it like that and to say like, you know. It's like, I'm not going to work with you. Like, <laughs> I normally, like, look at people and, you know, I decide it's like, okay, so I wouldn't work with you. Like, I do go to a lot of courses and, like, workshops. And sometimes I meet people, I'm just like, no. There was someone I met and he was like, I said my idea, actually. And he was like, no. And I was like, I'm not going to work with you because, one, you're, you're incredibly pretentious. And I really try to avoid being that and try to stay humble as much as I can. Um, but the fact is just like, no, because if you're like in charge of people and you said no to someone, it's like, you need to be more constructive with your criticism. You need to tell them, it's like, that's a great idea, but we're going to go with something else right now. Or like, you don't just say no. Oh, I could punch them. <laughs> it's monetized with violence. Damn. Um, but don't like like I don't know like it really does have a toll on you but you really got to look at it from their point of view and just look at their situation and what they grew up with and what they've dealt with and you know you can knock what you want to do at the park like honestly because you're given the dream the vision because you're supposed to fulfill it you don't have to listen to anyone if you don't want to again it's your choice and I think I was actually going to discuss this in my last podcast episode but I had like a breakdown I couldn't film it it was really funny um so <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up now so you don't have to um deal with anyone you 
if you don't want to. Actually, now I'm writing this in my book. Eh. So, spoiler. Um, so, like, I met someone at, like, a job interview, and I would never know this person in real life if it wasn't for this job in, in real life, um, in my life, if it wasn't for this job interview. And I said that I, you know, I just wouldn't, like, I just wouldn't have them in my life. And I think I remember watching, I oh, watching them cross the street. No, I remember being, there was a moment in time where I saw them across the street and I was just like, I don't have to talk to them if I don't want to. And that really is a choice. It's a choice for you to, you know, your vibe is your tribe kind of thing. It's like, don't, you don't have to tolerate people if you don't want to. And it, it goes for this, you know. Um... But I do thrive off proving people wrong sometimes, but it really does chip away at your, I don't think that's the healthiest thing to do because it can chip away at you. But again, look at, you know, their backgrounds and say, screw you, sir, I don't need you. <laughs> and the majority of time, you know, you don't. It's like, oh gosh, you know, there've been countless people that have t been told, you know, certain things like they can't do it and you know the proven like the guy that ran the four minute mile they were like you can't do that and just like uh, he did <laughs> so don't ever you know feel like you can't do something most of the time you can it's just people do like to give them their own input and their input is influenced by their background so knock them out of the park honestly um yeah, again, limit perspective. Yeah, so people who limit your personal growth may have their own biases, like I just said, and fears that prevent them from seeing your true potential, which I just said, oh my God, I'm a genius. So as a result, they may discourage you from pursuing paths that they deem risky or inconvenient, unconventional. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> So without considering your unique strengths or aspirations, yeah, people have their own input on things and they should shut up. <laughs> no, they should because, you know, you've got to make that decision. Um, You'll be like, okay, so no, I'm not going to work with you. Just be, think like that. It's just like, I'm not going to work with you on my journey throughout life. No, because if you're trying, if you're bringing me down, it's like, I deserve more respect than that. So no, goodbye. See you later. <laughs> we don't know her. She's gone. Um, so missed opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So being held back from others can prevent you from seizing opportunities, learning, growth, and development. Uh, this can hinder your ability to reach your full potential in a fulfilling life. Life knife. What? <laughs> Beautifully. <laughs> um. No. Um. So I've learned this throughout my life I, I, not throughout my life but like recently and I don't know if anyone can relate but I have learned to do things by myself a lot of the time this really annoys me well, it doesn't really annoy me it, it would be nice to have someone there but and this is why I was like this is why I'm self-partnered because I'm the only one that can do it right I that that was more for protection because I was like really grossed out by the behaviors of some men and I was like no and I'm self-partnered go away it's like I'm not interested and I'm genuinely not interested because I did try to date recently like a dating app and I was like do you know what I'm just not interested and that kind of goes against the woo way of like it's like my religion if that's a religion like Taoism like it goes against woo way which is like forcing things it's like action non-action so, action from non-action. So, the right things that be the river. It'll flow and then I'll hit a rock and I'll be like, you're my true love. <laughs> no, I don't know. So, but it happened with my friend. I love her. I'm going to call her out. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. But it was genuinely like, I want to join a running club. And they run every, like, weekend. And I'm like, I want to go. But her job hinders her. Like, that. And that has a domino effect on me and I have to run by myself. So fine. <laughs> but you do get used to doing things by yourself. 
um, Robin Williams actually did say it's like the people, what is it, the people he always thought the worst thing would be to end up alone but unfortunately, like but actually it's being surrounded by people that make you feel alone and it's like, damn, Robin you talk to people that's so ow <laughs> that's so true and if people are making you feel like you're alone at the park, we didn't know them because, no, because that's not right. You shouldn't be surrounded by people that are making you feel like that, that are holding you back from, you know, things that you want to do. And unfortunately, you're going to have to jump your own hurdles. Like, um, and that sucks, but that's so empowering. Like, I've actually forgotten how scary it can be, like, getting to, like, new places like because I do go to a lot of workshops and like going there and meeting new people like networking events I've got used to it and I don't even I'm not even scared of it anymore that's like a hurdle I have like buried in the ground it's got growth over it now it doesn't exist like that <laughs> is you know and that's like quite an accomplishment and some people can't even think about doing that like, I remember I would never be in a Skype call of, like, new people because there was a lot of Zoom. Skype? What? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> no, a Zoom, like, I would never do that and talk to people. But there was a weird hurdle I jumped over. And I could do that. But, you know, it's, like, think of all the opportunities that, you know, I'd missed because I had, like, limited myself in that area. Like, it's so odd, isn't it? But, um... But don't, you know, I would have never learnt all the things that I've learned now, you know. But don't, it's like easier than done. It's like, don't ever hold yourself back. It's like, well, who, you do have like fear thing. That's a really odd, I don't know what to say on that really. Because it's like, it goes more in depth than you think. Because you got to learn how to, you know, uh, it's practice isn't it the more you do it it's like be scared be the first pancake be absolute sh Ooh, that's all be absolute awful in you know what you're doing at first because the first pancake is never going to be the best okay so then you have to keep going and making better pancakes oh, i used to suck at making pancakes now i make the best pancakes apple cinnamon and white chocolate i don't know what that does i love them they're so good um i really want some right now oh damn so yeah do things you know by yourself even though they're really hard to do them but you've only got you to depend on sometimes it's really hard to depend on other people um you can't always rely on other people and again I've decided not to do that and that's why I'm like self-partnered and you know I just super hyper independent it's quite disturbing but you know fine um I guess I got a bit of And have a cry moment <laughs> okay so again someone's constant criticism bad no we don't we don't want that um and it's okay to walk away from it also so putting down someone's dreams you know when someone put when someone puts down someone's dreams it can corrode their confidence and make them feel hesitant to pursue their goals like don't ever again like we're going back to like no one who <laughs> no one will ever take the mickey out of you for your dream you know <laughs> no, the right person the right people will never criticize your dreams so you really have to be cautious in who you talk to so that goes with that so controlling behavior again like and i recently like i remembered a story a memory that my <laughs> that i was in a bookshop with my nan actually um but controlling like people like i'm gonna I don't know where to start with this one. So people who try to control every aspect of another person's lives limit their opportunities to growth and interdependence. This can, you know, be through micromanaging, isolation and emotional manipulation. Again, manipulation. I think that 
it was from when I was treated like I was still like, oh, this girl, you know, you can't do anything, you're high. Um, so that, like, I remember, yeah, this story, this memory. <laughs> I remember this memory when I was in a bookshop with my mom, my nan, and I was in high school and I was like in my last years or something and I picked up two books and I was like to my nan because she bought everything bless her heart because I was spoiled <laughs> and I was like I want these books because I want to you know be a therapist um you know I want to be a psychologist and this also happened again with um my ex because I yeah again I want to write books and I was I finally, I'd, I'd kept like this secret and I was writing books and I was just writing and writing and writing this book on this laptop that I got from like school or something, I don't know, it was like an old laptop and I remember being at my nan's writing and da 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 and it was like just so dramatic and he read it and then he said, have you seen an episode of Futurama where basically that was the storyline? I should have took it as like, okay, so my writing's at the level of Futurama and that's like a really good cartoon. <laughs> um, but I was like really young and I loved it. I love writing and, you know, and I definitely truly believe that might be my guy. Like I always thought it was like the podcast and stuff like that. But in reality, like looking back, it's like maybe it's like writing, but I can't write fiction it's always non-fiction for me <laughs> and I always get like a such a tickle and I'm like oh, I love it um I really can't pinpoint make a guy to be honest just like it's gotta be something I don't know one of them I don't know um don't think too much into it but I yeah like I wanted to be I know exactly what I wanted to be in like I was like I want to be a therapist and you know writing does come along with that and it's non-fiction <gasps> Um, or is it fiction? No, it's not fiction. I always get confused, I don't know why. I was like, yes, it's the best, it's what I want to do. And of course my mum was like, you can sing, you're going in re no, what did you put me in performing arts? And it was horrible. <laughs> it was just not for me. <laughs> oh, the bullying. Ah, oh, the tears. <laughs> um, but that obviously hindered a lot of my progress throughout life and this is why I'm gonna you know take it upon myself to now do my psychology degree because that was kind of taken away from me and you know it's never too late to do what you want to do if someone's telling you a story of like oh you're too old to do it it's like no you if you feel the instinct the drive the pill to do something you do it set build an atomic bomb if you don't mind. um so you do it because, you know, it's your dream. It's your thing that you want to do. Why would, why would you listen to someone else that didn't pursue their dreams? Why? It's stupid. No. <laughs> um. So unrealistic expectations, like having unreasonably high standards or expectations oh my gosh this happened to my ex I he was just like the proof of this um because it can be really detrimental no it can be really like paralyzing and it can make them feel like they'll never be good enough um if you give them like you know high achieving goals and just like this like mindset of like you just never be good enough and having these expectations and he could do everything he could fly a plane he could do a lot play piano he could do a lot and he's now still working at like a garage like petrol station and a fuel station i don't know you guys listeners i'm trying to be the best <laughs> i'm kidding um and you can see how much crushed him because he had high expectations to do everything and he just went depressed like massively and I'm like bro dead dead he's a good guy got married recently um but I I yeah you, you do see that it's like don't you know 
only do, wait, is this in that book? Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. I think where the guy's son kept pushing him to do baseball or something. Oh my goodness, there's a quote on you. <laughs> You're gonna have to go read that book, so was, um, Where they basically encouraged him to do something he wasn't good at, so you need to look at your child's sounds like push them to do that unfortunately my mum did do that with my singing she pushed me in form arts like that was wrong because she should put me in music or you should have sat me down and asked me what I wanted to do mummy <laughs> not having a moment it's funny um or you should have asked me and I would have told you I want to be a therapist she would have probably crushed that dream anyway um <laughs> my sister knows that <laughs> okay so okay so like a support so have this so not having someone who believes in you and your dreams can make it so much harder to achieve them and this can be especially damaging when parents teach us or close friends oh, it's big. again i will say it over and over again oh you know it's right for you you have to be stubborn you have to stand your ground you know what's best for you because it can be a matter of like years in the future where you you're you're working at mcdonald's like honestly like you need to do what's right for you ignore everyone <laughs> they, they don't have a say <laughs> um because you know <clears throat> and i learned this actually from such a young age i don't know if i mentioned it but it's very much like i remain silent from around those that will only belittle you like and I definitely learned that lesson because it was just like you know I didn't grow up in the environment where I could say I want to be an astronaut and they would just be like oh well you have to have this and this and this and this and this it was just like boom 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 it's like just whacking me with a negative hammer like <laughs> I was like the mole <laughs> it was just like yeah no it wasn't great environment and but that's okay because <clears throat> I think my friends me that's okay because I can take that back for myself and I can do what I want to do now because I am an adult and I want to you know be a psychologist and I will be a psychologist and I will struggle for many months to be a psychologist but I will and that's what I want I want to get to get my degree in psychology and I will be a writer so you know it's kind of like a you know I can't swear but you know what I mean it's kind of like <laughs> that um for those guys because you know maybe you know you're not where you want to be right now but you can take action and control for it um you know there's no you know there's nothing really stopping you like just your ability to not do it. <laughs> um, if it's like a thing like money, people like, there was a guy that bought a Ferrari, wasn't it? Was it he started off a tea bag <laughs> with um, an actual tea bag, like coffee, drink, beverage. Um, yeah, he started off with that, like eBay, and he kept selling and reselling. And I think he had like a Ferrari. So it's like, don't like you can do things okay you can do things um <laughs> it's like it's completely possible it's only if you choose to believe that's not and i know it's hard because we have been brought up with that negative hammer <laughs> i'm kidding um you know it choice is up to you you can take the action you want or not um it's never too late to do anything you want to go to paris you could fine treat yourself um so again promoting fear this is so toxic um in <clears throat> installing fear of failure or taking risks can prevent someone from stepping outside their comfort zone and reaching their full potential like i always thought like i was like okay so not everything's going to be on my doorstep like there are things that i want to do but it's not going to be on my doorstep Okay, so I'm going to have to go out there and find it. It's like, and I had this, <laughs> oh my gosh, so toxic in my household. <laughs> oh, my mum was not happy. 
she just started treating me quite badly, sort of yelling at me. Well, not yelling at me, but really being... And I think it was just her way of coping with me leaving for, like, uni and stuff. But, like, I was treated quite harshly. And I'm like, just remain silent and don't do anything. <laughs> Can't remember if I did or not. I remember <laughs> once getting kicked out. It's quite hilarious. <laughs> um, pretty much just grease. Yeah, so that is really toxic. But again, that is self-respect. That's knowing what you want to do. Um, don't let people instill fear in to you because most of the time it's their own fear. And that's actually nothing to do with you because, you know, it's only you can tell what's right for you. Um, Written there, so you'll never miss out on something you fear. Perhaps I meant like, you know, again, it's like fear is like fear is really silly, and it is completely overfabricated in your mind, and it's made up. And my the best advice for me is just to do it anyway. It's like feel the fear and do it anyway. There's actually a book called that by Susan Jeffers. She's the best. Read it. It's great um taught me all about responsibility and taking it on um but yeah fear is fear can really restrict us and when people imply it through negativity super toxic don't listen to them listen to your instinct listen to your instinct i've once been told actually <laughs> i was so scared of because when I passed my test, I was really scared of parking in places. I was like, is that okay to park there? Is that right? You know, um, that's not going to be in the way, is it? And I had a member of my family turn around and say, if it was a fire truck, they'd just ram into it anyway. What? Like, I am so scared of, like, you know, that. And it's like, you cannot... <laughs> allow that to limit your potential like honestly if I look back I would have looked at like ways to park I would have googled it I would have been like uh you know la -dee -da. <laughs> but um yeah I would never ever allow someone to talk to me like that and that's for you you need to find that place of self-respect you need to stand up for yourself and figure out what's right for you don't allow other people to you know imply a certain their fears onto you because you're going places and they're not and the reason they're not is because they didn't take the risk to go anywhere so really don't you know allow these morons to cripple you into not achieving your potential okay so like guys I think that's good um so guys if you don't mind like there's this feedback form in the description like I really need it for market research and I really need to make this podcast the best for you and if you fill out the form there is a chance to win one of my journals that I'm going to be pre-launching very soon <sighs> what hell <laughs> um no and that will be ready, ready and available for you to soon and I'm super excited about that. And I really hope you guys got something from this and learned something new and decided to, you know, knock people out of the park that you don't need because, you know, there is really no need for people to hold you back and there's really no need for you to listen. Like, again, you are the gatekeeper of your mind. Like, do not allow people to have their input if it's negative. Just say I respect that, but it doesn't align with my values. and just um, oh. <laughs> you don't need them okay so thank you so much for listening this has been the Chris Lang podcast and I'm being here Summer Clark 